Hello, this is Father Daniel Kim, Marital Missioner, and welcome to our daily Gospel reading and reflection. Today's Gospel reading is according to St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 29 to 32. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. For those of us where Sunday school was part of our upbringing, we were taught that Jesus is the Son of God. But then why is Jesus referred to as the Son of Man over 80 times in the New Testament? At least for me, this did not make much sense at first, especially having heard differing explanations about what this really means. So to put it simply, the general reference of Son of Man basically means human being. It's another way of saying of mankind or humankind. However, in reference to Jesus, the implications go a bit deeper. In the Old Testament, it was prophesied many times that the divine Messiah, or the Christ, will be the ultimate Son of Man. In other words, one who possesses two natures, divine and human. So by Jesus referencing himself as the Son of Man, he is saying that he is the fulfillment of this prophecy. But the issue for many of his fellow Jewish compatriots was that they refused to believe Jesus' claim because what they were expecting was a political Messiah, one who will conquer and vanquish all their enemies. But Jesus did not come for this reason, but came as a conqueror of sin and death, and not just for the Jews, but all of humanity, which is depicted in today's gospel by the reference to the Ninevites and the Queen of the South, who were Gentiles, or in other words, non-Jews. So the ultimate takeaway here is inclusivity, not exclusivity, of God's love and concern. Thus, it is important for us to follow as well, to accept diversity rather than reject it. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel reading and reflection. Please be sure to tune in again tomorrow. Have a blessed and inclusive day. If you enjoyed today's gospel reading and reflection, please make sure that you subscribe wherever you're listening to podcasts. Also, if you know somebody who may find value in today's reading, please make sure that you share it with them. To learn more about how you can support the work that Mary Knoll does around the world, please visit us at maryknollsociety.org. And if you're interested in subscribing to our online magazine, please feel free to visit us at maryknollmagazine.org. Thank you once again for spending your time with us today, and God bless.